And now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Christian Harold, the director of the People's Sculpture Race. Unfortunately, I don't have a camera where I'm looking um, on my screen. And let me just quickly turn on um, all of our other presenters. Good afternoon, Christian. Hi there. <laughs> Okay, I've gone down here and, oops. Um, uh, Ed and Laish, you can un, um, mute yourselves and turn your video on as you please. So um, how many of you out there in the audience saw the video of people sculpture racing and virtual sculpture racing? Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> but do please send me your comments and questions for the um, for our panelists to uh, Gmail to um, sculpture racing at gmail.com. And we'll see them and I will send them to we'll ask the, uh, the panelists to answer those questions. Um, so Sculpture racing, as you may know, was something that was started in Cambridge uh, back in the 80s by uh, a group that called themselves the World Sculpture Racing Society. And we, we got their blessing to continue their tradition in 2015. So we've been having two races a year. Our first race was at the MIT Museum where we went around the building. And the second race was under the auspices of the Cambr of Cambridge Arts who were very, uh, accommodating of us and have kept um, being our sponsor for the last five years. We've also worked with the Cambridge Science Festival. We work um, with them in March, we have our, our project. So our website is www.sculptureracing.org. So you can look at that anytime and find out about our events or let us know if you wanna participate and give us a um, heads up that you wanna join in the fun. Can you do me a favor, Arthur? Can I lighten the kit in this giant? Um, so the basic project is to take wacky sculptures and the participants can be artists and engineers and family members uh, and race it through urban streets and sidewalks. Uh, there's a lot of uh, chaos, um, people uh, uh, sculptures break, they fall apart, as uh, the people here can attest, having watched the sculpture races and participating in them. And um, we hope you can join us at some point for that. Um, Daniel here on the, I guess everyone doesn't have the same view or do they, I wonder. So in my view, I have Daniel at the top left. He is uh, a long-term sculpture racer and um, Dan, you want to say anything about your experience with sculpture racing? So I, uh, I got involved in sculpture racing um, in 2015 with the, uh, with the uh, reboot of sculpture racing. I understood that it had originally happened in the 80s, um, but in 2015, um, an artist by the name of Kim Bernard was um, working working with uh, our physics lab, our physics teaching lab, as an artist in residence, and we had a we had a few meetings to talk about how we might put together a racing sculpture, and those meetings uh, resulted in a, a sculpture uh, called Sisyphus, which was a square wheeled boat that that sailed on tracks, wave-shaped tracks. Um, and it was, it was a physics demonstration and it was a sculpture and a vehicle and all of these things in one. Um, it, was, it was a giant project. We had a, a dozen people working to construct it and 20 people uh, to crew it. Um, and in the end, on that, on that beautiful June day in 2015, we ran into a problem that we hadn't foreseen and ended up having to carry the whole sculpture as, 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 our, 
as as we raced it. So um, we came in dead last with 15 seconds to spare. Um, that ex that experience um, made me made me think that the next year I was going to make something as light as possible and um, and go for the win. So I I put together my own um, my own cardboard sculpture. Um, oh, beautiful, beautiful picture. Gravity car on wheels. Um, that's, that's, a, that's our, that's our model of the uh, Sisyphus at the, um, at, at the MIT museum. Um, Prototypes, we call them. <laughs> it's a maquette. Um, and um, so, so the, the, in 2016, I, I put together a, a lightweight cardboard sculpture and um, ran it to win. And I'm, I'm the very, very proud um, owner of a first place in the speed category trophy. Um, I've, I've, I've run, uh, I think, another, I've, I've run in three races and I've assisted in one. And it's always a blast. And uh, as you say, it's always chaotic. Um, people, people getting in the way, people getting out of the way. <laughs> Um, and lots of, lots of, um, sweating and, and, and laughing. Wait, here's, here's that, um, piece. Ah, yes. It was, uh, yeah, interestingly, that, that was a, um, that was a viral, uh, a, a viral capsid, capsid. Um, that was the, <laughs> ah. Now, apropos in 2016 that I would be making a a, a, a gigantic virus sculpture. Yeah, uh, Elizabeth uh, Shanker and company. Um, can you tell us about your projects? Sorry, Daniel, did you? Yeah, okay. Um, I can give a quick summary. Thank you, Kristen, for uh, having this and hosting this, um, particularly being creative uh, through these unusual times and circumstances. Um, it's nice to be able to continue to uh, grow this project. Um, I guess um, we started uh, as a family project, uh, I guess five years ago, um, we built a spaceship um, and the kinetic piece of it is when you um, pulled it, it went in a circle, um, which as novices, we hadn't thought through if it, the point is to go fast Centrifugal force is not your friend because the faster you go, the tippier it gets. And it didn't take off, but it, I guess it could have if we had gone faster. Um, from Yeah, thank you, Daniel. <laughs> um, from there, we built a B, um, which was really fun. We had um, support from um, an artist, um, David Lang, who was so generous with his time and his studio and um, really took uh, me and my family under his wing to help us figure out how to create a um, a winged sculpture. And obviously his work has a lot of wings in it. So it was really special to get his take on it. And I, I, I hope my version of it um, did not, uh, was a credit to him, not anything else. Um, and then the piece that we entered this time was a whale. Um, this is the third year we've raced it. It's um, based on a kinetic, um, a mechanism that I discovered online um, described by David Margolis, who's a kinetic artist in California and has done a lot of kinetic sculptures that are much more complex than, than this. Um, there's actually one in the Science Museum in Boston if you ever wanna um, see something, it's really beautiful. And what's amazing about this mechanism is it's able to take um, kind of motion and create something that appears very organic he makes these pieces that look like um, a drop of water going into a pond and you really see the kinetics of it, which is beautiful to me. Um, and so we use that mechanism to, um, to move our whale. Um, here's a picture of my son, Isaac, in the festival last year. Um, and uh, we named our whale Blue and she is orange. Um, the first year we did it, we just got her to move and that was a big accomplishment. The second year we did it, we um, we actually made her talk. 
um, my husband was able to um, program a, his between his phone and this um, Raspberry Pi, um, such that if you talk to the whale and ask the whale a question, the whale would respond in whale language. So that was really special. Um, and this year, you know, our goal is this idea that you're making something that's um, static move, it, you create a connection to it. It feels more alive. And this year, what we did is we used video technology to um, actually help you imagine that the whale, though we were pushing it in the park neck down the street from our house, it kind of using a green screen morphed into swimming in the ocean. And that was really um, kind of our next iteration of this project. So um, it's been really fun to have a creative outlet and work with my family and um, enjoy um, the warm weather and um, our lots of, we have several collaborators um, who have helped over the years. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to um, Lily Martinez, who is my co-creator on this sculpture and also Albi, um, who is our neighbor and a retired engineer. And as you look at the bicycle wheels has made this amazing contraption um, that allows the the kinetics to work and I could not have done anything but imagine this without his help. So thank you. And um, Lajos and Edwin, oh, now um, Lajos, who is the second from the top on the right, Lajos Hader is uh, a founder, is um, a co-founder of the uh, Harry, <clears throat> Hader Harry's uh, collaborative. Do I have that right? Well, usually, it's been called Harry's Hater. I, <laughs> I was perfectly happy with the second place, but uh, <laughs> but I I appreciate the promotion. Um, and um, can you tell us a little bit about how, in your perception, sculpture racing has um, came about and what you've seen of it over the years? Uh, Edwin, feel free to jump in. Edwin is a um, interim director of the um, uh, the Department of, uh, uh, of Art, uh, Sculpture design and media <laughs> at Northeastern. And he is um, an artist um, and he's one of our judges as is Lajos. So Ed, feel free to jump in if you have any thoughts on this too, but Lajos, please go ahead. Well, my sort of familiarity and to some extent entry into the sculpture racing problem or issue or <laughs> incredible <laughs> excitement was basically Bill Wainwright who was a very close friend of mine, who's no longer with us. And he made, he had a very strong engineering background. He worked with Bucky Fuller, uh, other people. And he also liked to make sculpture that did odd things. He had this traveling chair that was probably made 15 years ago and showed up regularly at uh, the event. And I, I generally, my wife Mags and I had come out to most of the events and helped in whatever way, like push, pull, lift, whatever. Nothing, nothing very exciting, just kind of basic muscle things, which I'm not as able to you know, do now as I used to be. Uh, and I was asked by <clears throat> Christian to come and join the, uh, the jury and I was happy to do that. So um, my most, most of my work for the last 30 or so years has been public art, not not so much in this area except from time to time, but all over the country, because Cambridge didn't really have a very active program on sponsoring public art, but it's getting better. So we're doing work here and elsewhere uh, in collaboration with Max Harris. So I think that's about it, unless you have a question. I, I have a funny picture of you. Um in action, but I'm not immediately seeing it, uh, where you're racing um, Mitch's uh, oh, yes. wheel, wheel vehicle. So uh, Ed, have you been familiar with sculpture racing at all? Uh, not in this area. Um, I have a lot of uh, former students who are also involved in the art car, which is, I know is a different type of event, but, uh, uh, but personally I've been in, Boston for 30 years. Um, I did a lot of, I've done a lot of kinetic sculpture. Uh, those living in Cambridge, probably the piece you might most be familiar with is the dot matrix installation at the Green Street, Green Street parking garage. 
which occupies three four floors of the stairwell when you enter into that space. Um, and now I'm a member of the Boston Sculptors Gallery along with Mags and um, most recently did an installation uh, for the gallery that included Japanese lanterns that opened and closed, um, sort of simulating the idea of invasive species. Um, so kinetic artwork is near and dear to my heart and I was very happy to uh, be asked to help jury this event. Thank you very much, Ed, for doing that. Um, now, uh, I think that uh, we could talk a little bit about virtual sculpture racing. <clears throat> so if you saw the video, you saw my brief introduction there. Usually we, uh, our, our great pleasure is to perform and to interact with spectators and the environment uh, to create um, a creative, uh, hilarious, um, convivial public space. And so we weren't able to do that uh, for the for the science festival or for the river festival become stream festival this year so our original plan daniel can you tell them our original thought of what we were going to try to do the original plan was that we would um that we would all have our devices and at the appointed hour we would all go out to a, a safe place on a on a road or in a park somewhere and start running and on a on a pre-measured seven tenths of a mile course, we would run along with our with our phones recording as we raced our sculpture, and you know whoever whoever came in first would get the first prize of speed, um, and and the other the other points of um, there 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 are other uh, uh, categories, and those would those would be judged live as as they happened. Um, after a lot of thought and experiment, we kind of, we came to the conclusion that it was going to be really tough to get all of our devices to upload at the same time and then download into a machine that would be able to string them all together in a way that would, that would make a race. It was a beautiful idea and in 10 years, I'm confident that the technology will be will be such the, the uploads and the downloads will be fast enough that we'll be able to do something like that. But this year, uh, it, I don't think we would be so lucky. So we after a, a number of, of Zoom meetings, kind of we kind of scaled it back to video um, video submissions. Um, some some timed or or some some measured uh, uh, race racing segments so that there would uh, so that so that Christian's um, editing crew would be able to put together a, a, a video presentation that would approximate the feeling of of a sculpture race. And so I, I think I think you were pretty successful. I, Thank you. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let me let me click that so that I see what my what my next question is. Oh no no. So so we're still um, just uh, uh, illuminating the concept of virtual sculpture racing. Oh, right. Yes. Then, great. So. Uh, so that was our, our desire. We had that was the, the means, the motive, and the opportunity. That was the motive, and the means failed with uh, live video videoing, and so we are here now. And that's an important part of what I want to address um, in this opportunity. So our thought was that we would uh, solicit events from people who weren't necessarily videographers. So they did. Uh, wacky events, and we had to come up with some categories that would stimulate their imaginations. Um, and then they would video those events and send them to us. So there's there's a few levels here. There's the actual events, and there's the uh, the videos of those events. And then we took those videos and we tried to edit them together um, so to create a, a shared space. And I I think that the the last thing we should do in our next um, 
15 minutes we have is to uh, uh, talk about how successful that experiment is and has been. But um, so the editors were Rock Lewis, uh, Sam Helwig and myself, and we did our best. So we created these videos. The judges on the other hand, tried to look, which includes Lajos and Edwin, um, were to look at the videos and see through the videos to the events and more or less judge those insofar as that could be separated from the video. So um, that's all I can think of right now on that. Do you have any other, both Lajos and Daniel and Elizabeth were, were part of the planning to try to figure this out. Do you have any other comments on, on that? Well, I was kind of a, um, yes, I, I'm trying, I mean, it's, a, it's been a short experience really. I mean, really got involved only in the last two days. I mean, we were involved before, but you only got to really see what we're looking at. <clears throat> and I think it was an interesting, I mean, just like a lot of this whole uh, virus season teaches us lots of stuff, like what you can and what you cannot use out of your usual uh, set of skills and resources. And it's limited. I mean, you discover that it's kind of like trying to judge a very three dimensional, you have a four dimensional, because there really is the whole idea of uh, time and collaboration and the whole way, way these things happen is that you, you, you reduce it to a picture, basically, or a set of pictures, a video. And which means you really can only do so much. I mean, I owe uh, an apology here to uh, Elizabeth because I never saw a close up of your piece. I just saw it running by. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, there was only so much that, that tells you. And being basically an artist of three dimensional constructed things, I'm very aware of how limiting that would be. And uh, that's just what it is. So we did what we could. And some of the comments that at least I came up with were sort of ironic because that's kind of what you do when things aren't really working out the way they're supposed to, but you're getting something. And so you kind of have to deal with that. And uh, I mean, that's interesting in itself, even if it's limiting. So that's what it feels like to me, but it was, it was very interesting. Um, Did I insult anybody? No, no. <laughs> I'm a little bit um, uh, here and there because I was trying to queue up uh, some images, um, which I don't know if it will work. Daniel and Elizabeth, do you have any thoughts on the, the process to create this other thoughts on the, um, I think actually Daniel, you mentioned some stuff. Elizabeth? Um, no, I think um, having done the sculpture racing for the past few years, I, it was really um, kind of a creative challenge to figure out how to kind of translate what sculpture racing is is to this type of medium. And I agree, I think going from three dimension to two dimension, um, uh, you kind of lose something. And I think it was, it's a good try what we did and um, I'm happy with how it came out. So thank you, Christian. You're welcome, thank you. Uh, I, by the way, mean that too. I didn't mean that it was a failure. I just meant it was very different. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't hear that. I mean, that didn't. It's an it, it's experimental, and I mean, when I was doing it, I I didn't know what to call it. What was it? Documentary, creative documentary. You know, and I thought, I've ended up with experiment because what you can never go wrong with an experiment. Right, right, Daniel. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, what I want to show you now is just uh, the projects. Um, in case you didn't see the movie, I have a, a still. But I was trying to queue up a. Um, a video and, and it's going to make some noise because I don't know how to turn off the video. Let's see. Um, I mean, I don't have to turn turn off the sound, but I think it's kind of cool. There we go. Are you going to share the uh, screen? No, no, no. I I'm trying to. Um, I I have the whole uh, video in uh, Final Cut, and I'm trying to just show one part of it that shows the, uh, so I had to queue it up. 
So you're seeing all of my final cut. That's all right. Okay, so this is just, I'll put the still back up. Cool. We hope you will enjoy them. <laughs> so I, I couldn't figure out how to, in the time I had, wow, has um, your son been on that entire time, Elizabeth? My son, what do you mean? Uh, graphic, was I sharing the screen? No. Okay. no. So here's this. Um, let's see. Why don't we, can we just leave this on the screen? Can um, spectators see us as well, is what I'm wondering. Does anyone know? I don't know. We show up on the Zoom, but I don't know what, what's actually being broadcast. Okay. Well, that's an important question. Something that uh, Zoom themselves were not able to answer because I didn't ask it correctly. Um, can one of our uh, angel overlords tell me if you're listening? Okay, great. Uh, are you seeing us? Okay, excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. That's Sean Ethel Ethel from uh, Cambridge Community TV. So let's um, let's chat about these uh, now. Normally, so we've got um, about eight minutes. Usually, we we give prizes. Initially, we gave prizes only for speed. Now we give prizes for um, ingenuity, spectacle, and speed. Uh, this year, we added a dy dynamism. Um, so with the idea being that if people were at home, they could still, and, and didn't have much space, they could participate by doing something dynamic, something dynamic. In, in music, it also means louder and softer. So there were a variety of ways you could take that. Um, and our judges, uh, Laios, I have the, why don't I give the results? And then um, <clears throat> Laios and Ed can give their two bits. Do we have those? I do. So the prize for Dyn... Now, some of these people won second prizes, but I'm not going to go into that now. I'll let them know at the time. Now, all of these folks, there are five artists and seven submissions, as you can see from the, the, blue, the blue page. Um, I will... Initially, we were going to have physical trophies, but... Instead, we're going to give them a motion five animations and certificates um, as trophies. Um, so the prize for dynamism is Sam Helwig. Uh, and you can see his wacky, um, let me turn on my annotator, which is completely mixed in with everything else currently. Uh, spotlight. Oh, I see. So this little red dot. Um, so here's Frame IO Sam Helwig riding on his um, skateboard. This structure here is comprised of all of the skateboards he's owned since he was a kid. And it's uh -huh. just the tops of them. Um, and he has gas cans on the front and back, even though the propulsion is through his legs. Um, and he he moved that thing quite um, dynamically. So he is getting the award for dyna dynamism. He had a he had a steering uh, a, a steering wheel, and it was not attached to anything. I thought that was a, an excellent um, an excellent piece of the of, of the enactment. Do you want to um, weigh in, Ed and Laish, about what you said about why? you awarded him this prize? Well, I um, was fairly literal in my um, defini definition of each of these categories. And so when I looked up dynamism, it talks about vigorous activity and progress. And if I think of any single entrant who was very vigorous in trying to get their sculpture to move, it was his sculpture because I can't imagine even being able to, to walk after uh, 
trying to get those skateboards around and down a hill and over stairs and the gas can falling off the back. And it just seemed like a, a complete and total workout for him just to move that thing along. Uh, indeed. Um, okay, so, uh, and then, and Laosh? Yeah, I thought that he was probably the one who was in most danger while he was doing his thing. <laughs> that impressed me. The other one is that when he finally, after all that running around and that thing, he finally did fall off. He very gracefully got right back up and got on it. So those two things said, hey, that's dynamism. He's on it. Great. And then for, um, we have about four minutes left for speed. Oh, yeah. Um, spectacle. So um, the jurors selected um, uh, Elizabeth, which is pretty cool. Elizabeth and company. Who's the company again? Um, so Lily Martinez, um, Albi Simonis, and then uh, my kids have been involved in building it in the past. So they are, uh, so Michael, Isaac, and Caleb Frehawat. So I apologize, I should say that you and I got the spectacle. Nice. Co-awarded. Congratulations, congratulations. Um, so as you can see, um, Elizabeth created the um, Blue the Whale and I created this um, Fluxus piece from the 60s called Calls Canto Six Letters. And I also created this uh, narrativeless event with a plague doctor uh, on um, um, Sugarloaf Mountain in, in Deerfield, uh, which is actually the, uh, this is the, this is the binoculars that can look out onto the terrain covered by a plastic bag. Uh, so it wouldn't be ruined by the winter weather. And I put some costume features on it. And uh, Elizabeth, do you want to say anything quick, very quick about your creature? Um, so yeah, no, I described it earlier. It's a, it's a whale and um, yeah, we tried to make it extra spectacular this year by making it kind of morph into the ocean. So uh, we were happy with how it turned out. Thank you nice. for the, thank you for acknowledging our work. Laish, you had something funny to say about one reason uh, that you... I mean, part of the irony of the day was that it was called blue and it was orange. <laughs> yes, that was... Uh, so that was interesting. And uh, as I said before, I didn't really understand the mechanism and how elaborate and how interesting it was, because I could only see it as it, as it was sort of went running by from a distance. So that was limiting. And in terms of the uh, plain plague doctor thing, yep. I was fascinated by the fact that it was hard to tell when you look in that, which one of you was in charge. <laughs> it could have been the other, yeah. That I mean that the critter was there could have been moving you as opposed to the other way around. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah, that's right. Such a quiet after I say anything. <laughs> and, and, and any thoughts on those? Yeah, I mean, I've never actually attended one of the races. I'd like to do that in the future, but uh, this is one of my personal favorites, and uh, it comes closer to what I imagine seeing at the race in terms of these kind of mechanical contraptions with people powering them. And so um, it was very nice to see this piece in the list of entrants because I think it gives me a maybe a better taste of what the race has been like in the past and might be in the future. And so uh, I was happy to uh, award it the spectacle award. Fabulous. So, um, so now we only have one minute. We have 30 seconds probably. So let me actually just summarize. So we have the award for speed went to Drew and company and the award for ingenuity went to Ned Carlson. And that ends our, I wonder if that's a warning sign or whether we actually have to get off now. Kirsten? Uh, yep, that's, that's your time. So okay, thank great. you guys. Thank you all. Sorry for thank the rough ending. That's okay. Yeah. I really appreciate all your help. Um, if you 
Okay. So if you all want to go to a Zoom, I'll send you a Zoom link and just to do a debrief. Bye. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank, Thank you, Kirsten. you all. Thanks, everybody.